1451, it seemed that the Hundred Years' War was about to end. France had wrested control of Normandy from England and later of the Gascony region to the southwest. However, Gascony had been ruled by the English for three centuries and the citizens of Bordeaux, the main city of the region, petitioned King Henry VI of England to send an army and drive the French from his lands. The English king agreed and in 1452 sent John Talbot, a veteran commander, with a force of 3,000 men. Seeing the army, the citizens of Bordeaux expelled the French garrison and welcomed the English with open doors. Most Gascony towns and villages did the same in a short time. Meanwhile, the King of France, Charles VII, was preparing a campaign to recapture the region for the second time. For this, three armies were formed and a fourth under the command of the King himself, in reserve. Talbot, seeing these preparations, requested reinforcements and another army of about 3,000 men was sent to him, under the command of John Lyle, his son. In 1453, two of the French armies advanced from the north, conquering some cities and castles. The third army, advancing from the east, was located two kilometers from the walled city of Castillon. It was composed of about 8,000 men-at-arms, archers and spearmen, and about 300 cannons and hand firearms. Fearing that Talbot would attack them along with the defenders of the city, the military engineer, Jean Bureau, ordered the construction of a fortified artillery park protected by a moat, palisades and small caliber guns on the bank of the Lido Iyer stream, a tributary of the Dordogne River. He sent a force of 800 archers to occupy the priory of St. Florent, northeast of the city. In addition, he also sent 1,200 Breton men-at-arms and archers to the town of Capitoland and the Horrible Hills, north of the camp. The English commander wanted to wait for the French in Bordeaux, but the popular clamor to save Castillon made him decide to attack the French force that was besieging the city. His army consisted of about 800 men-at-arms, 800 experienced archers, 5,000 English foot soldiers, and 3,000 Gascon soldiers. In total about 9,000 men. On July 16 they left Bordeaux and advanced rapidly towards the Dordogne River. On July 17, Talbot's vanguard of 500 horsemen at arms and 800 mounted archers outpaced the infantry and artillery and, led by local guides, managed to surprise the French detachment from the Priory of St. Florent. After a brief but bloody fight, the French withdrew to the fortifications with heavy casualties and pursued by the English. Two hundred horsemen came out to protect the retreat and eventually the English fell back to the Priory. Talbot had decided to rest the infantry, who had just arrived after an exhausting march, but from Castillon he was informed that a cloud of dust was visible over the French camp and that they were withdrawing. The English commander decided to launch an immediate attack before the French fled and he lost the opportunity to defeat one of his armies. However, the cloud of dust was caused by the French knight squires and retainers leading their horses out of the fortifications to give them more room to move. They were preparing to fight. Talbot, leading the English horsemen, crossed the Lido Iyer stream by a bridge to the east of the town of Castillon, with orders for the infantry to follow as soon as possible. Moving orderly, they avoided the camp to the west, then turned north, toward the longest side of the fortifications. Then they realized that the French had not fled and thousands of them were defending the breastworks. Talbot had his men dismounted and, without waiting for the infantry, attacked the fortifications. The French cannons opened fire, killing a multitude of Englishmen. 
Despite their heavy casualties, the English and Gascons managed to reach the Palisades and begin their assault. As hand-to-hand -hand fighting raged, the main English infantry force of 4,000 men arrived on the battlefield under Lord Kendall's command. It had taken them one hour to get there from the Priory and they had left the artillery further behind. Talbot ordered them to launch an attack against the right flank of the fortifications. The arrival of the infantry redoubled the efforts of the men in the vanguard, causing the French defenses to be close to being overcome. However, the Breton cavalry on the hills descended on the battlefield and made a devastating charge into the English flank. The Breton infantry, alerted, returned from Capitolin and entered the camp from the north, reinforcing the defenders. The English began to fall back and the defenders of the fortifications, launching a counter-attack, rushed out of the camp, catching them between two fronts. The English fled over the fort of Pas de Rosin, on the Dordogne River, at which point Talbot and his own son died while trying to organize their escape. After Talbot's death, the escape was totally disorganized. About 1,000 men managed to enter Castillon. The rest of the Anglo-Gascon army was killed or captured by the pursuing troops. The French, leaving the camp, immediately began the siege of Castillon, which surrendered two days later. The English defeat left the Gascogne region without defensive capabilities. King Charles VII himself marched at the head of his armies and cities and castles surrendered one after another. Finally, the French besieged Bordeaux, defended by 8,000 demoralized English and Gascons. On October 10, 1453, after two months of siege, the English negotiated the surrender of the city in left Gascony. Shortly thereafter, an English civil war, known as the Wars of the Roses, broke out, and the remaining English troops established on French soil had to return to England, thus renouncing their claims to the French throne and their former territories. 
Within a few months, the English lost all their other possessions on the continent, with the exception of the coastal city of Calais. The Battle of Castillon was the last military confrontation in the open field and it can be said that it marked the end of the Hundred Years' War, the longest war in Europe.